Welcome back everybody. As you probably guessed from the title, as well as the thumbnail, this is what we're going over today. This is the Daniel Defense Soundguard Silencer. This particular one is in 556, and there's actually three different models as of when I'm recording this anyway. Who knows, that may change in the future. There is this one, which is the 556 version. There is a 30 caliber version, both of those being stainless steel silencers. And then there is also a 30 caliber version, which is titanium. Big difference, of course, is going to be weight and then sort of like what they're rated for. But honestly, all of them are rated for pretty intense use. And we certainly will put that to the test here today, as you can imagine. But um, what we're going to do is, of course, go over the features of the silencers, pros and cons, things like that. But we are actually going to test the sound reduction that you can get with this silencer on a couple different uppers, a shorter one and a longer one, to show you guys what you can expect, because I actually do have a mil-spec decibel meter, and I paid a bunch of money for it, so we might as well use it. So with that, before we delve into the actual silencers themselves, let's head out to the range, see what kind of sound reduction we can get, and then come back and go over the details of the silencer. Now we're going to test the sound. We have a 10 and a half inch FN barrel Palmetto State Armory upper with some 45 grain Remington 223. It is one meter off the ground, excuse me, 1.6 meters off the ground, and the meter is one meter off to the left. So we shall see how it does. All right, now we're gonna mount the silencer. All right, everything is the same, just the can is installed. Looks like it got a little quieter once the oxygen got out, which makes sense. Let's switch it out there to a 16 inch upper. Everything's the exact same, except we swapped out a 16 inch mid length upper. You guys can see that was 111 decibels on there. Remington ammo still. Wow. So that was really consistent. Let's throw the can on there. Again, everything's the same, just with the can on there. quieter as expected. Now that we're back out here on the dock, one thing I want to point out before moving on to the details of the silencer, just because we always get new folks here on the channel, is that decibels are measured in a logarithmic fashion. So for example, a 10 decibel sound, if you have a 20 decibel sound, it is not twice as loud. It is orders of magnitude louder. Um, and depending on where you read and whom you read, anywhere between three and five decibels is a doubling in the amount of sound that you are experiencing. So if you're getting, you know, 25, 26, 27, whatever the case may be, decibel reduction, that is a huge reduction in noise. Now, obviously with 5.56, we're still using uh, supersonic ammunition, so you can't tame the supersonic crack. But I did want to point that out because some, for some people who are new, 25, 26, whatever, 30, 20, those may not seem like huge numbers, but they're huge numbers in terms of what you're actually reducing in terms of sound signature for a gunshot. Now getting into the details of the cam, we're talking about the 556 one primarily because that's the one I have, um, but a lot of this will sort of bleed over into the 30 cal ones as well. Um, so you guys can see here on the back, this is what it ships with. This is how it ships in the configuration here. And basically we have wrench flats everywhere, which I do like. So we have wrench flats here on the mount and this mount is a direct thread type mount, but it will fit on any hub compatible silencer. So that really is one of the big selling points of this particular can. There's a couple of them. We'll hit them here in just a second, but one of them is that it is hub compatible. So the reason they ship it out with a direct thread uh, attachment point is because they're assuming as a company that you guys are gonna wanna run whatever mounts that you have out there. So if you guys have like a dead air mount or something like that, 
you can throw it on there and it'll work just fine or a yankee hill or there's a number of different mounts that will work with hub compatible silencers so it, as you can see there it has the threads for that and even if you're using whatever hub compatible mount that you want to use you still have wrench flats here on the body of the silencer itself now getting into the actual details of the silencer so this is not like a flow through can in terms of uh like what Huxworks does or formerly OSS or something like that, but it is a low back pressure can. So they do that by a number of different ways. And one of them is going to be just the actual diameter and the volume of the can. So this can is larger. I will roll in the actual specs here on the screen so you guys can see it, but it's larger than most of your 5.56 cans, both in terms of length as well as in terms of girth. In fact, I went to actually, when we were doing the test that you guys just saw, saw there, rather the decibel test, I was going to run this on a 12 and a half inch upper, but the rail was like a 12 inch rail and I couldn't get it actually seated because it was wider than most of your m -lock rails. So that is something to consider if you're looking to pick up a silencer, any silencer silencer but particularly this one if you want to seat it under a rail just check your internal diameter on that before you purchase anyway so uh, having that larger volume is one way that it has less back pressure that kind of makes sense and I try to get this on camera with like three different cameras hopefully I will roll it in here and it will make sense the image that you're seeing with what I'm saying sometimes cameras don't do a great job of capturing things and this is one of those cases but basically if you look in here there's a couple things going on that allow it to be a lower back pressure can than your typical design so first off it has these ports basically four of them right in the side of the silencer and there's essentially a sleeve that goes through the outside uh, of the silencer itself basically around the baffles our traditional baffles as you would call them and it goes out in the outer sleeve and it is cooled down goes out and then that's what's coming out here additionally in what we would consider a baffle even though they're not really traditional baffles in the silencer there's cutouts in there as well, allowing the actual gas to go out and cool slower than you would have if you had a traditional baffle in there, which is just going to blast all the pressure back into the can. And so I ran this on a 10 and a half inch Faxon uh, upper that I have, and it has an adjustable gas block on it. And it, the gas block is set for the, like, as I have it preset, it was set for the uh, Liberty Constitution silencer, which is a 556 uh, silencer, but it doesn't have any of the venting that this one has. And I had to actually uh, increase the amount of gas because it wasn't getting enough gas with this can versus that one. So compared to like your traditional silencers, it's definitely less gas. That said, you're still gonna get gas in your face compared to like a Huxworks silencer, if that makes sense. So it's definitely lower back pressure for sure. And they do a good job at that, but it's not a no back pressure cam. Additionally, as you guys can see here around the edges, and you guys probably noticed during some of the slow motion, that we've been rolling in these ports here do vent gas out but like i said that's actually coming from those holes in there through the outside layer of the silencer and it's being cooled down so when i first saw that i thought it was going to be really flashy and it's not and the reason is obviously because the actual gas and the all of the things that are in there the un unburnt gunpowder and all of those things that would create a flash that we typically see have been slowed down so much and given more time to burn so from everything I saw, I did not see any flash coming out the sides, which was a big concern of mine when I actually saw the design of the silencer, but it doesn't have it in real life. So hopefully the fire truck's far enough away that we don't have that audio interference, but continuing on flash suppression on this one, very, very good and uh, better than I thought from the factory. Now, one thing to point out there about those ports is that on the 30 cal silencers, not on the 5.56, but on 30 cals, it allow, they have a system rather of screws that allows you to tune it uh, for recoil mitigation. So you can actually block out some of that gas leakage that's coming out the outside of the silencer if you want to reduce the actual muzzle flip and things like that. So you can tune it on those, uh, but the 5.56 silencer does not have that point of impact shift onto the next point. So I can only speak to it with this particular mount. Obviously we didn't use any of the other mounts during the testing, but with this particular mount, it has like zero point of impact shift at all. We use it on three different AR-15 uppers, as well as the M249. And again, I saw zero point of impact shift, which is very good and definitely something that is nice. Now, what I've found over the years testing a lot of different silencers is that direct thread, or at least a direct thread adapter like this, 
kind of is the key for uh, mitigating point of impact shift. So if you use other mounts with it, you may see a point of impact shift. I can't speak to all of them, obviously, because we've only used this one. Next point to cover is going to be size and weight. We already talked about size a little bit, but it is a big 5.56 silencer. There's no doubt about it. It's also a heavy 5.56 silencer. So in 5.56, there are no barrel restrictions. Everything's full auto rated. And obviously we tested that out. If you look at like the SOCOM standards for full auto rating, it's like a real thing. It's a test that has a lot of different factors that go into it, uh, rate of fire, etc. We didn't do any of that. We just mounted it up on a couple, uh, you know, fast to semi-automatic guns and ran it. And it did very, very well through multiple belts of ammunition, different folks firing it. And it got hot. I mean, it got silly hot, but it was just fine. So I have no doubts that the full auto rating on this particular silencer is valid and you absolutely can shoot the crap out of it because of course being all stainless steel not having any of the fancy gucci stuff in there uh, makes it very very durable for a hard use type of silencer the downside though is that it is a very heavy silencer so for a 556 silencer it's heavier than most that's for sure i mean obviously there's heavier out there but we're rolling in the weights here we should roll it in with the mount without the mount so you guys can see on my scale what this thing actually weighs but it is a larger silencer it is a heavier silencer and basically just to kind of give you guys an idea of that so here is like the gemtech halo which is something that's been around for a long time and you guys can get an idea there of it i should be rolling in photos as well and then this is a surefire socom rc2 and you guys can see it's longer and it's fatter than both of those options, which are gonna give you similar decibel reductions for sure. But again, this one here is, I think the advantage of it is going to be hard use, hub compatible, those sorts of things. So if you're looking for a lightweight silencer, this isn't the one for sure. If you're looking for one that you can just beat the crap out of, this is definitely one I would look at for sure. Of course, price point on this one is gonna be lower than a lot of competitive offerings as well. So with the direct thread mount that we have here, uh, MSRP, I think, is $750. Of course, if you look around the street, it will very likely be cheaper than that. And I think with that, you guys have all the information that you need to go out and make an informed decision as to whether or not you want one, which is kind of what I'm here to do on this channel. So with that, guys, we will close the video out. If you have any questions about stuff that I didn't cover, by all means, let me know down below in the comment section. You can also ask those questions on my various social media platforms. They should all be here on your screen as well. If you guys have been following or think you have been following me on Instagram or Facebook and you guys haven't seen anything from me in the last few months, that's because they've deleted all of my pages yet again. Kind of is what it is. Um, so if you guys want to follow me there, just check me out of the ones here on your screen because those are the new ones or follow me on non-Facebook or non-Meta rather platforms uh, because it's probably a little bit safer there and my content will probably be up longer. If this thing goes on sale, we will also post it across our social media. And we'll also post it in the daily deals email. That goes out every day as the name indicates and it has six to eight of the best deals that we find around the internet, uh, whether it be ammo, gear, guns, accessories, whatever the case may be. And you guys can sign up for that at the website here on your screen. And you can also sign up for my monthly email and that one goes out every month and that is just a way rather. So that way, if I'm suspended here on YouTube, which certainly has happened recently, I still put content up wherever I can. And that email, the monthly email will go out and regardless of whatever platform that it is on, in that email will be all of my videos. So that way there's no big tech giant censoring your eyes from my content. So sign up for both of those. I definitely recommend you use an on Gmail email. Uh, the emails have a higher delivery rate. If you don't use Gmail, they tend to censor my stuff as well. You guys can probably see a theme going here <laughs> in the video. But with that, that is all I have for you. Thank you all for watching. I truly appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing everybody in the next video.